Mammals make up only around 5% of all known animal species on this planet, but of course some of the largest animals on this planet are mammals. It's only natural to want to focus on these animals as they are so impressive, but there are some giant mammals that don't get the attention that they deserve. Although an animal may not be a giant in the conventional sense, it can be a giant in its own world. In this video I will be focusing on mammals that are the largest members of their family, and I will be going through three separate families. The members of our first family can be found across Europe, Africa and India, and they are the Old World Porcupines. The Old World Porcupines are large terrestrial rodents, and they're distinguished by the large spikes on their backs. These act as a very important form of defence, because in the wild these animals are targeted by many top predators. There are two separate families of porcupine, the New World Porcupines of the Americas and the Old World Porcupines of Eurasia and Africa. The Old World Porcupines are slightly larger on average, and the largest porcupine in the world is an Old World Porcupine. Most Old World Porcupines belong to the same genus, but they are split into three different subgenus. These porcupines all differ in size and shape, but they all live very similar lives to each other. Most Old World porcupines are very stout and heavily built, and the majority of their diet is made up of plant matter such as fruit, roots and bulbs. Porcupines are some of the longest lived rodents, and some species have a maximum lifespan of around 28 years. This is a lot older than some of the largest rodents in the world, the capybaras and they're only rivalled by the naked mole rats with an estimated lifespan of around 30 years. Porcupines are known for their quills which are modified hairs, and these hairs come in very handy when you want to fight off predators. Some porcupines have to deal with leopards, lions and hyenas, and the best way to fight back is by stabbing them in the face. The porcupine's quills detach very easily, and these quills are even barbed. This means that it's very hard for the predators to pull out the quills once they've been stabbed and these quills have proven to be a very effective form of defence. As I've already covered, the largest old world porcupine in the world is also the largest porcupine in the world, and this species is the crested porcupine. This species is found in Italy, North Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa, and it's often found in very competitive ecosystems. This porcupine has long hairs and quills that run along its head, nape and back, and it can raise these long hairs and quills to appear larger. You could argue that it doesn't need to do this as it's already a giant, as they can reach a maximum length of around 90 centimetres, and they can weigh in at around 28 kilograms. This size not only makes them one of the largest porcupines in the world, but it also makes them one of the largest rodents in the world, and if you're a predator, you really shouldn't mess with them. The next family we will be taking a look at are the armadillos. Armadillos are very curious and mysterious creatures, and they've been around for a shocking amount of time. Armadillos first started appearing around 65 million years ago, but since then they have gotten a lot smaller. Today there are two different surviving armadillo families. One contains mostly extinct genera, and one contains the largest living species of armadillo in the world. Although there are plenty of different species of armadillo, the most famous species are often the most common. The nine-banded armadillo is definitely one of these species, and it's the only armadillo that can be found in the United States. Just like the porcupines, the armadillos carry their defences on their backs, and when the armadillos are threatened, they curl up to defend themselves. This has become a very famous part of their behaviour, but only two species can fully curl up into a ball. One of these species, known as the Brazilian three-banded armadillo, was once believed to be extinct. It hadn't been seen in the wild for decades, but eventually it was rediscovered in 1988. Unfortunately, this species isn't out of the woods yet, because just like many other species of armadillo, it is threatened with extinction. They fall victim to hunting and habitat loss, and some are even taken out by pets. It really is important that we look out for such ancient creatures, as they each play very important roles in their ecosystems. Most of these plucky little mammals could scurry by you and you wouldn't even notice, but this is definitely not the case with the giant armadillo. Like most other armadillos, this species is found in South America, and the majority of its diet is made up of termites and ants. To help get at these prey items, it has some very impressive claws, and the giant armadillo is also known for being quite an impressive swimmer. 
Even though they are nowhere near as large as their ancestors, as their name suggests, they are still giants, as they have a body length of around a metre, and a tail length of around 50 centimetres. Their maximum weight in the wild is thought to be around 54 kilograms, but in captivity they can reach 80 kilograms. This size not only makes them giants of their own world, but they are also giants in general, and personally I was surprised to find out how large they can get. The next mammal family we will be taking a look at is the squirrel family. The squirrel family is one of the largest mammal families, and this family can be split into many different subfamilies. This family includes the tree squirrels, the ground squirrels and the flying squirrels, and members of this family can be found across the Americas, Eurasia and Africa. Once again, squirrels can come in various shapes, sizes and colours, but the majority of species are rather small tree dwellers. These mammals play a very important role in forest regeneration, because they forget about a large amount of seeds that they bury. These seeds eventually grow and will turn into habitat for more animals, which is why it's very important to have squirrels around. The ground squirrels live a very different life to the tree squirrels and the flying squirrels, and because they mostly live on the ground or in burrows, they run into a whole host of different predators. They have to battle mammals, reptiles and birds, and because they always have to be on the lookout, communication is very important. In a lot of cases, the biggest enemy to a squirrel is another squirrel species, as they will viciously fight over food and territory. This can be seen very clearly in the UK, when the invasive grey squirrels have displaced many of the native red squirrels. At first, you may think it's easy to identify which species of squirrel is the largest, but really it depends on what measurement you go on. The heaviest squirrel species is the Olympic marmot, as these ground squirrels can reach a maximum weight of around 11 kilograms. The largest tree squirrel and the largest flying squirrel reach a very similar size, but the Indian giant squirrel is slightly larger on average. This species is not only very large, but it's also very beautiful, and there are quite a few different subspecies. They're typically found in the tropical mountainous forests of India, and in these areas they gorge themselves on fruits, flowers, nuts and tree bark. They dwarf most other tree squirrels found in other parts of the world, but Asia is also home to quite a few other giant tree squirrel species. But this multicoloured rodent has giant in its name for a reason, as they have a head and body length of around 50 centimetres, and a tail length of around the same. As I've already covered, they're not the heaviest members of the squirrel family, but they still weigh in at a pretty impressive 3 kilograms, and captive specimens can get even larger. So even though they're not the heaviest squirrels, they are among the most iconic Asian rodents, and they are a giant in their family. If you have any other mammal families that you want me to include in a video such as this, then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.